Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you. That's right. I'm not yelling it. I'm fucking up my voice doing that every goddamn week. I'm starting to drink throw coat tea. I need to take care of myself in these next, this next chapter as I peel off another layer of the onion. Whatever stupid artistry thing. No, I've just decided, you know, a few people in my life, you know, I'm kind of seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing what living a certain lifestyle leads to. And I'm like, you know what? I need to clean up my act a little bit. All right. It's time to grow up. And uh, so one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm not cutting out the booze. Or I'm just going to stop yelling. I'm, I'm checking in on you. You know, it's baby steps, you know, and I'll gradually work towards laying off the heroin, you know, but I like it. It helps me, <laughs> helps me go to sleep. You know, the amount of times that I always want to take a nap when I'm standing up outside in public and I just can't do it because my mind just won't shut off. You know, that's that's when the heroin comes in. That's when it comes into play. You're going to have to listen to my phone ding dong because I got a phone call coming up and I don't want to miss it here. Um, anyways, let me see here. Uh, oh, Jesus. Now I'm going to be looking at text messages, message, messages, messages while I'm trying to do this podcast. This is really going to fuck with my ADD here. How's your week going? I'm going to tell you something right all about old Billy Boo's bag. All right. I had, f- I had family in from back east. Some of you guys guessed the movie, by the way. Um, it's something you do with a car. <laughs> you can't figure it out now. I can't help you. Um, and what I love is now everybody knows what the movie is, but they're still going to te- treat me like, is it, is it, you know, the long, long, long trailer? Starring Lucille Ball. Um, why don't you guys ask me if it's every other movie that you can do with the car other than the one you know it is? How about that? How about switching it up a little bit? Is it Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo? You know, I realize all these years I've been using that as a reference, like, because it's the, f- one or the first or second movie I saw. I saw For the Love of Benji. Then I saw Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. And my mother was just like, I, my mother told me, you know, I, just those kids' movies were stupid. I wasn't going to take it any more of those, you know. Basically, there wasn't anything there for her, and she just was looking at it like, you know, there's really nothing here for these kids. It's a fucking talking car. It's a talking dog. You know, how long are we going to keep the lie going, all right? The fat fuck doesn't come down the chimney. Dogs don't talk. And the VW Beetle, it's, a, it's, a, it's an economical car, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's not respected. So that's it. Well, let's go see Stripes. Um, anyways, uh, completely forgot what the fuck I was going to say there. How the fuck did I get to that? I have no idea. Do I need to go on? Do I need to play some brain games? Is that what it is? What the fuck was? Oh, eat more healthy. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. So oh, I remember the family back east. I got it. I got it. We're back. Right. You ever hear those outtakes on Casey Kasem when he flips out? Screaming and yelling. Now, God damn it. I'm not fucking reading about a fucking dog dying. You know, this is basically like those outtakes, except I, I don't edit them out. And I also don't have his iconic success. Yeah. Other than that, I think it's the exact same thing. But anyways, I had family come in. Family come in from back east twice in this past month. And um, I had to take him out to the spots. We had to drink a little toast to, for the little one. Huh? Little Nini. Dude, she's laughing her ass off now. It's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing ever. Um, Could not be enjoying it more. And it's June's first. And for the first time in my life, um, someone can actually look at me and say, Happy Father's Day. Right? And I don't have to be like, oh, my God. In what comedy club did you work? (laughs) How old is it? Um, Anyways. No, I was never like that on the road. I was a good boy, sort of. I had my moments. Anyways, plowing ahead here. Um, so because they came in, I kind of got off my diet. I was still doing the cardio every day. So I stepped on the scale, and the unacceptable second number in my world is eight. Okay? If it's ever a nine, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to jump off a fucking building. Um, I won't do that. I'll just buy really comfortable. I'll keep wearing the golf clothes that I wear. They'll just get bigger, you know? I'll get into the John Daly line. Um, so uh, 
I'm, I'm back on it. I'm back on it. Jumped on the scale today, 178.8. Still unacceptable. I, I have been having the worst fucking time trying to get down to my fighting weight. I wanted to be 172 by my birthday. My 49th. The end of the 40s. Wrapping it up. If I was a professional athlete, I would be 10 years retired unless I was Tom Brady with my sinewy muscles or whatever the fuck he's doing with his spongy muscles. Um... I don't know what he's doing. Sorry, I'm drinking the throat coat. Oh, Jesus, Bill. You're just annoying on so many different levels today. I, I apologize. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm going to try to just lay off the booze for a little bit. Um, I'm going to San Francisco uh, this weekend, and uh, I'm working with fucking my Dino, my Dean Martin, Joe DeRosa. Okay, so that's going to be that's going to be a mulligan that night. (laughs) Joe, my friendship with Joe DeRosa and his friendship with me is one of the great friendships in show business history. And it's all it's all alcohol fueled. You know, I don't think we've ever hung around each other sober. And I don't think I got to get him on the podcast. I really got to get old fucking Joe DeRosa, whatever his background is. Egyptian, Italian, he doesn't know. That man was left at a doorstep of a funny bone way back in 1977, I believe. He showed up out of nowhere. A baby nobody wanted. He came out of the womb already wearing those dark framed glasses. Um, That's sad. That's sad. Um, Anyways, plowing ahead. (laughs) I'm sure I'm going to hear about that. From old Joey. Um, I, I'm guessing two drinks in. Hey, dude, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. It's, I know you were just joking, but, you know, to bring that up, it's just really... Um, fuck him. He trashed my dog on stage. Oh, and that's coming out. Fourth drink in. I'm trying to guess where the argument's going to come from this weekend while I drink with Joe. We really don't argue anymore. Once I discovered fair enough, you know, I grew up a little bit. He grew up a little bit. And that's all we do. We start to argue, and then one of us just goes, hey, f- fair enough. And we laugh, and it just diffuses everything. Fair enough. Fair enough can stop wars. You know what I mean? This is our borderline. No, we think it's that. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. I understand why you would think that, but I mean, you know, fair enough. Well, are you going to give it to us? Well, yeah, I, I didn't say that. Well, then I'm going to fucking start shooting. I think fair enough. I mean, if that's what you feel you need to do. It just diffuses the other guy. And then the other guy's standing there going like, no, you're supposed to, you're supposed to get mad. And then you get mad, and then I get mad, and then I lie to my people, and you lie to your people. And we dehumanize each other, and then, then we start shooting. Stop saying fair enough. All right. Fair enough. Um, anyways, did anybody watch the, uh, the Penguins versus the fucking Predators? I'll tell you something about these, these these penguins from Pittsburgh is they know how to fucking win a goddamn series. Jesus Christ. The Predators in an 0-2 hole. For those of you bad at math, when it's best four out of seven, you're down 0-2. That means you have to win four of the next five. Oh, the coach isn't going to tell you that. What's he going to say? All right, guys. All right, boys. We got to take it one game at a time. Okay? These guys cross the hall in that locker room. They, they put their skates on one, one, one boot at a time. Okay? We got to start winning the battles. Take it one period of time. Um, dude, they are beating the shit out of Sidney Crosby this playoff series. This playoff, just this, this, this playoff run. I don't know what he did to the refs, but they are done protecting that guy. They're slashing them. They're hooking them. They're fucking hitting them in the head. Anything that they can do. Um, I don't know. I, I think that they, uh, they, they should have brought a goon up or something. Somebody to do something. I don't know. But anyways, how about fucking Malkin's goal? Absolute fucking sniper. You know? And I know that they uh, pulled old Pedo Tube there, whatever his fucking name is. For some reason, I can't remember his goddamn name. Pecorina. What the hell's his name? 
Oh, Jesus, I can't. Cocksuck, I can't remember. It's something about a dick. Is the, the pre- <laughs> I fucking watched every game and I still can't remember his name. The fuck is his name? Is it Pecorino? Was that the guy from San Jose? Was he on San Jose? And then he went to Nashville. You know, once I stopped collecting cards, you know, and I turned to scotch, I just never been able to, I've never been able to handle the names anymore. But anyways, I don't give a fuck who you are. Ken Dryden, Patrick Waugh, Terry Sawchuck, nobody stops that fucking puck. That was an absolute filthy, filthy fucking goal. Um, so my prediction way back in the day, what did I say? What did I say before I flip flopped and said Ottawa was going to, was going to win game seven before I did that, I said the Penguins were going to win the whole thing. So when it happens, I'm going to ignore the fact that I thought Ottawa was going to come back and win game seven. Cause I was questioning the goaltending in Pittsburgh. I'm going to ignore all of that. And I'm going to pull a Paul Verzi and say, dude, what did I say? Dude, I called it. Um, just out of, uh, you know, jealousy, I want, to, uh, I want to see the Predators tie up this series. Not jealousy, just out of, like, selfishness. I want to see the, um, the NHL season go as many games as possible. But uh, the, I'll tell you right now, the way the Penguins are playing, uh, I mean, I don't even see this going back to Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll see. Something incredible has to happen. I don't know who the fuck shot the goal, that babyface kid there. I mean, I, th- that was like the, the, the puck had eyes. It, like there was one little fucking just puck-sized space for a split second between old uh, Pekka Penis there, whatever his name is. It just opened up for half a second. And the puck literally turned sideways like some Matrix shit and went in the go- I remember when I, when I saw it live, I was like, how the fuck did that go in? I don't know, man. I'll tell you, the hockey gods are smiling down in Pittsburgh right now. Um, who knows? We'll see what sort of home home ice advantage they have. But uh, and also the NBA playoffs, not playoffs. The uh, final starts tonight. Is that the NBA Finals and the Stanley Cup Final, or is it the Stanley Cup Finals and the NBA Final? I think it's the NBA Finals. Um, every time I say something stupid, my phone rings. That's it right there. It does a little bing. All right, I have a call here in fucking, uh, let's see, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So I'm going to have to hit pause here. It's not going to matter to you guys because I'll just pick it up, you know. It's not going to be 10 minutes of silence like I'm trying to do something artsy. Um, that starts tonight. Um, I don't know. I don't have a feeling on this one. I want the Cavaliers to win. Um, I want the Cavaliers to win because I still feel like they don't get their respect. People aren't talking about them like they're the defending, like they are the defending NBA champions. And it's because it's Durant went to the Warriors. I think that that's why nobody seems to be able to talk about it. You know what I mean? Just to be able to see like, hey, not for nothing. These guys beat those other guys last year. So I hope they keep disrespecting them because I always root against the pylon team. You know, and I even did it with the Red Sox in 2007. I, I just I, I don't even think I watched the World Series. I mean, obviously, I was happy that we won. Obviously, I'd rather see us win than the fucking Colorado Rockies. But I, I was just like, this is, that's not competition. You know, having said that, having said that, when the, uh, when the, base, when the basketball and hockey season ends, okay, I'm getting the, the MLB package and I'm watching my $210 million Red Sox who are in second place, three games behind, the evil empire that has nothing but their own homegrown talent. <laughs> and I'm going to watch that collision course and see how that goes. Um, I, I've learned this is what you have to do if you're a sports fan with some family back east. Is the baseball is such a great sport, but the problem is, is the first almost the first half of the season is the most exciting time in basketball and hockey and your emotions as a fan are so heightened even if your team is out of it just to watch you know there's always something great happens in the in the final unless you know the fucking ref called 38 fouls on one team and 15 on the other then it sucks letting it go um and then all of a sudden it's over 
And then you're settling in. Uh, just a bit outside. Uh, beautiful day for a ball game. I'll tell you, his on-base percentage is 645, and uh, he's really seeing the ball right now. Uh, Kip, you played the game. What was it like when you just uh, when you hit a zone like this? Well, I'll tell you, you know, when you hit a zone like this, I mean, that ball, I mean, your eyes are as big as Christmas, and that you, I mean, it's just, it's like you can't, you just stick in the bat out there, and the ball's going where it wants to go, but... You know, and, uh, and what do you? What, how do you? How do you try to? Uh, how do you try to stay in that zone? How do you try to uh, try to keep it going? Well, you know, it's one of those things you can't control. It. You just you learn as as you mature as a player to just try to enjoy those moments. And uh, well, you know, you hope it goes as long as it can. But uh, eventually, it is going to swing back to the other way, and you just hope that that's as uh, you know that the slump doesn't last as long so uh you know you could uh keep your house in that gold digging whore that you met in uh tulsa when you're coming up in triple a that you knocked up and you don't really love but you like her you're hanging in there for the kid um you know you got to settle into that so what you need to do is uh what you got to just immediately you got to slow everything the fuck down and what you have to do is you got to watch a day game you got to keep score while you smoke a cigar You know You get your lineup You get it all ready to go You just fucking sit there And you light the cigar About the third inning You know And you just sit there And you fucking Maybe even on the radio Listen to it on the radio And you just It's like sports yoga You just have to totally Just calm your mind Fucking relax And then Slide into the dog days Of baseball Right and then you ride that out for about six weeks. And then all of a sudden it's NFL preseason. All right. And as the preseason comes along, you're excited about football because every week's exciting because they only play 16 games. Right. But baseball is also ramping up. So then when September comes along, it's like April, May, June with basketball and hockey. Because now it's like you're so excited. Oh, fuck. NFL football, college football. It's coming back. I have a reason to live, right? And the baseball race is heating up before you go in with Joe Buck and all the great October baseball. That's how you do it, all right? So these next six weeks after the finals are over, you know, I'm telling you, I'll walk you through it on the podcast. You know, you pick a couple of alternative sports. Maybe you watch a little Roland Garros, a little Wimbledon. You get into Formula One, maybe a little uh, MotoGP. Right? I don't know what the fuck you got to do. It's not, it's not my business. It's none of my business. What time is it? 9.55. Let's see if I can read advertising in five minutes. I don't think I can do it, especially when I got to type in my goddamn password. The family back east. Kidding. Um, all right. What do we got here? A love supreme. All right. Where are you? Uh, Indo. Indo. Cheeto. Uh, talk about how every man looks better in a suit. You know, when I'm checking out a fella, I love boy shorts just like the next guy. But what really turns me on is a nice, sharp-looking fella in a suit. You know what I mean? Grab him by his tie. All right, Indochino is making it easy to get a perfectly tailored suit at an incredible price. You can choose from hundreds of top-quality fabrics and personalize your suit. <laughs> your fucking initials on the pocket. Uh, just the way you want it. This is Bill suit. Whether it works, uh, whether it's for work, a wedding, or another special occasion, Indochino uh, has suited up hundreds of thousands of men and are now the largest made-to-measure menswear brand in the world. World, world, world. Uh, here's how it works. Visit a showroom or shop online at Indochino, I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O dot com. Um, like the Indigo Girls, if they went to China, Indochino. Uh, pick your fabric. I went to the warehouse. I picked out a fucking suit. I went with three piece. I tucked away my man tits. Um, choose your custom customizations from lapels to pleats to jacket linings and more. Submit, submit your measurements, place your order, and wait for it to arrive in just a few weeks. This week, my listeners can get any premium Indochino suit for just $379 at Indochino.com when entering Burr at checkout. That's 50% off the regular price for a made-to-measure premium suit, plus shipping is free. 
Uh, that's Indochino.com, promo code BURR for any premium suit for $379 in free shipping. Incredible deal for a suit that will fit you better than anything off the rack ever could. Nine fifty seven. How many more do I got? I got two more to go. Five four club. Yo, you like a short bitch? This is the five four club. I'm kidding. Um, looking good. Doesn't need to cost a fortune. Five four club is revolutionizing the way men stop. At five four club. They found a way to make a great look, great looking clothes affordable for everyone. Five Fold Club also understands that your time is extremely valuable. Why, why waste it at the mall or wandering around in stores? Each month they send you a, cur- a curated box of two to three items. That just means somebody else picked it out. I hate that fucking word. Curated. You know, somebody gives a shit. The fuck does this guy want? Tank tops? Yeah, you fucking tank tops. Um, why waste it? Oh, where the fuck am I? Uh, handpicked match the current season and your style. Oh, they're calling early. Oh, God, this is from Montreal, Quebec. All right, I got to take this. I'll get right back. All right, I'm back. I'm in between interviews. I'm in between fucking interviews here. I got it on the wrong fucking headphones. All right, here we go. Back, back. I got another interview in four minutes. With the family baggies. Um, all right, let's. What the fuck was I talking about? I'm trying to type in my password. This is a mess. Why wouldn't I do this before I hit fucking. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, Five Fold Club. Did I finish? Five Fold Club. Um, they've been helping men with fashion for over 15 years and shipped to over 100,000 men every month. Chris Paul and Mark Wahlberg use Five Fold Club. If Five Folk Club is featured in GQ, Vice, and In Style, among other publications. They know what they're doing. So if you don't think that's okay, Five Four Club will help you. What? They know what they're doing. So if you don't, oh, so if you don't, that's okay. I thought they were getting a little chip on themselves. So you don't think that's okay, then fuck you. Get your goddamn suit somewhere else. Five Folk Club. We'll help you build your wardrobe one month at a time. Because when you look good, you feel good, brother. Next thing you know, she's on her knees. It's a fact of life. You get $120 worth of clothes for just $60 a month. You can- <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It, 80% of the time, it works 100% of the time. You can pause or cancel any time. No commitments. And as a five-fold club member... You'll receive up to 50% off your items in their online shop and access to exclusive members-only items. You get a members-only jacket for 30 bucks. Free shipping and size exchanges. Go to 5 right now and enter your promo code BURR, and they'll give you 50% off your first month's package plus a free pair of sunglasses. That's 50% off your first package at 5 Club. Spelled F-I-V-E-F-O. No, you are club.com. Promo code BURR. 5 Club.com. Promo code BURR. All right, see so everybody, see so. You know, I've had funny feelings. I've gotten funny looks. I've eaten. I've even eaten funny smelling sushi. But let me tell you, none of those are as funny as CISO's streaming library of stand-up television and original content, especially not the sushi. Why would they try to write comedy for us? Let me do a quick rewrite of this. You know, I've had a funny feeling in my gut. I've gone down on a funny-smelling twat. You know, I've been in a parking lot late at night and felt funny, like, you know, is there someone going to fucking cut me up? But nothing compares to watching uh, fucking Six Feet Under on on, uh, CISO. All right, maybe I should have gone with this shit. Next, please mention the talking points below. I'm going to mention all of them if you fucking give them to me, you goddamn. Cunts over there. Um, with CISO, you get unlimited access to CISO original series. Next day, late night, hilarious stand-up ske- specials, binge-worthy classics, including 42 seasons of Saturday Night Live, the entire Monty Python catalog, the It Crowd, and more. I don't understand why more people aren't watching CISO. I mean, they got some fucking... Every episode of Saturday Night Live is on there. The entire Monty Python cat. I don't know what the fucking it crowd is, but shit. If it's following those two, it's got to be good. With CISO, you get binge-worthy classics, 
British cult comedy original series like Harmon Quest and Bajillion Dollar Properties. Not to mention the entire SNL library. I just fucking said that I'm supposed to pick one of these. Or watch your favorite sets from comedians like Louis C.K., Amy fucking Schumer, and Hannibal Burris. Access CISO content from anywhere at any time using iOS, Android, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, stealing cable from your neighbor, Windows, or Xbox One. Ready for the punchline? CISO is just $3.99 per month. No joke, $3.99 per month for all the comedy you want anytime, anywhere, ad fucking free. Go to CISO, S E E S O dot com right now to sign up for one month for free with the promo code BURR at checkout. That's CISO dot com, spelled S E E S O dot com, promo code BURR. All right, what else did I want to talk about? Um,. Oh, by the way, Tiger Woods, who was arrested, everybody said was arrested for, uh, for drinking and driving, blew a 0.0. 0. 0. Point fucking 0. Ah, Jesus Christ, here's another one. Hang on a second. Hello? Oh, man, those are two fun interviews. I just talked to a guy who goes by Lights Camera Jackson. <laughs> How do you not love that guy? That is old school showbiz. How do you ever forget that name? Lights, camera, Jackson. All right, let me type this in here. The family back east. My fucking password. Why won't you work for me? Why won't you work for me? You know what's funny? If somebody has enough time at some point to fucking splice together every time I'm trying to fucking put together my password. Um, yeah, by the way, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woo! Um, blew a 0.0. The dude was on pills. You know what I mean? The, the level of shit that that guy's getting, that guy sacrificed his fucking body to become great, okay? Now his body's breaking down, and everybody's blaming it on the fact that he cheated on his lady, right? And that's what did him in. His laser focus, he couldn't block out the, that. I, the first two years, yeah, I'm sure it bugged him. But, I mean, at some point, you move on, Right? His body, they said it from, from the very beginning. They said the way he swings the club, his body's going to break down at some point. So now look at him. Now look at him. You know, he's trying to come back. He's on all these painkillers. He wants to win another one probably before he hangs it up and goes to the, uh, the senior tour. He's doing what he has to do. These fucking drugs that you can get nowadays are completely out of control. When I was a kid, when a drug came out, bear or any of this shit, they didn't have 9,000 side effects. What happened was people used to be in the pharmaceutical industry, got into the fucking FDA, and they're the ones who policed the pharmaceutical companies, and those cunts just waved everything around like a third base coast did that lost his vision. All right? So then they let opiates into the fucking world. Now you got a goddamn heroin epidemic. Okay? And now Tiger Woods is taking too many of those fucking things, and he pulls over to the side of the road, and everybody's saying it's because he, yeah, the, the fucking blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman, who evidently is a saint, who took his fucking, his, his master's money, bought a giant house, knocked the fucking thing down to buy something else. Where did all that material go? Where did all those fucking gold-plated toilets go? They went right into the fucking ocean. You know? But she's a victim. Oh, give me a break. That's it for the podcast. Signing off. No, I'm fucking with you. Um, I'm just trying to energy my way through the last bit of this. Uh, what else do I have here to talk about? Oh, you know who has a great new bit? Uh, new bit. I wrote his name is Charlie. Charlie Watts, drummer for the Rolling Stones, has a great new book out that it's just uh, drummers that influenced him. And if you're a drummer and you're into that shit because he's, uh, I guess, a jazz drummer at heart, he talked about all these fucking great drummers that I've, I've heard most of the names and didn't know enough about them. And the fact that he could break down their styles and what they did has made me, uh, I was already listening to a lot of that shit through some of my drum lessons, but really just trying to listen to the shit that he's saying. It's a great book. Um, let me, let me look it up here. I'm going to fucking hype his book here. You know, we've been trying to get Charlie Watts on this podcast for a long time. I know he doesn't do a lot of interviews and, uh, but I know he'd want to come on my podcast. I'm joking. Charlie Watts' book. Let's see what we got here. Charlie. You know, the fucking internet works in like two rooms in my fucking house. I spent all this money. Like, can you get me the nuclear level fucking internet so I can somehow beat out my neighbors? And, you know, it works for a little while. Then that's it. Rolling Stone, Charlie Watts. 
10 things you didn't know about Charlie Watts. Why no books about Charlie Watts? You know, I'm usually good about fun. Charlie Watts, books, drummers, influence, book. You know, I nailed the John Daly search the last time. Come on, for fuck's sakes. Oh, Charlie Watts' favorite drummer. So it did come up. Dude, you can get it for 12 bucks, $12.37. Um, Whiplash, the film that puts the drummer in the limelight. Did I ever tell you guys how much I fucking hated that movie? I just hated watching somebody getting berated. It's just like, fucking quit. Go join another band. Why would you sit there taking that level of shit from the guy? And then not to mention the kid's fucking technique. I, you had to look away. When he was fucking playing real fast, he's making those faces. You could just feel the guy's forearms tighten up. This, guy, this guy's going to have carpal tunnel trying to please this complete cunt. You know? And I got to tell you, the best drums from that year was not in that movie. As great as the drums were, the best fucking drums, and some of the best drums I've heard in a movie, a mainstream movie in a long fucking time, was that Michael Keaton movie. Um, what the fuck was that movie? Where he was the, the former superhero, the bird. Do you know how long I watched that movie before I realized that was him in the costume talking to himself? Spoiler alert. All right. Michael Keaton. I'm just going to write Bird. Fuck you spell his name. I've only been watching his movies for 30 fucking years, Bill. Jesus Christ. Michael Keaton, Bird. Birdman. Yo, Birdman. Five four. Um, Who the fuck is the drummer in that? I know I talked about that before. The drums in that movie are fucking incredible. It, it, it's like... Like that, that's just a whole other level of drumming where that guy is like, he's playing like moods as opposed to just playing 90 million miles an hour all over the kid. That guy is, he's, he's, he's creating peaks and valleys. I mean, that was like a, that was literally a movie score just done with drums. I mean, how many people can have that level of talent? I can tell you right now, I know I don't. I already knew I didn't. And for the last three weeks, cause I've been so damn busy, I've just been playing like, you know, not on a real drum kit, you know, little practice pad kit that I was playing on. And I thought I was, you know, I thought I was doing something. And then I went down and I played on a real fucking kit. And Jesus Christ, everything that you think you can, you, you can do drops by like 50 BPMs. You know, it'd be basically like if you were just jogging on a treadmill being like, wow, man, I can run a seven minute mile. Then you go out to run down the street you know, and you forgot about hills and shit, and all of a sudden, you know, you, you can't run a seven-minute mile anymore. Even if it was flat, flat level, okay? Even if it was flat level, all of a sudden you run like a fucking 11-minute mile. That's what it's like. It was extremely fucking disheartening. And um, I'm doing the, uh, the comedy jam this weekend up in San Francisco for Clusterfest, which is just completely like one of the biggest, I don't know how they, they afforded to, to, to get all of those comedians and bands and all of that they must have had a lot of ad money somebody's doing something to establish that comedy festival going we're gonna go fucking you know nine zillion dollars in the hole to start it out but uh you might want to go this year because they're going big um oh and i almost forgot before i sign off here thank you to everybody who's been watching season two of f is for family um got nothing but great reviews you know, there's always a couple of cunty ones. What are you going to do? But overall, you guys not only like it, but you're saying you think it's even better than the first season, which for the amount of work that we put in um, to hear that kind of feedback, you know, I know I'm a, a jerk a lot. That really means a lot to me. So thank you guys for not only watching it. Thank you for the people that took the time to let me know how much you enjoyed it. Please let other people know about it. The more the people know about it, the more people watch it and the better chance we have of possibly getting a third season. Um, and that's it. That's the podcast for this week. Have a great weekend, you cunts there. And uh, here's a little bit, bit of music from Andrew Themelis. And um, then we'll play a little half hour of some greatest hits from a Thursday or a podcast or whatever from a Thursday gone by or maybe a Monday morning. I don't know what we're doing here. All right. That's not my part of the podcast. All right. I'll talk to you on Monday. All right, this is the longest fucking revenge story I think I've ever read. Let me see if I can uh, 
See if I can fucking just. I'm gonna. Bl- I'm gonna read that one next week when I have the energy. All right, questions. All right, Bill. Uh, I have a question for you. I was hoping you might be able to shine some insight on this. I have this great friend that that's a girl. Mistake. Um, and we get along great, and we have never had any sort of sexual tension. Fucking up. Or interest, despite her being attractive. All right, dude, right there, you're either gay or you're, or you're an idiot. And I'm, gonna try, I'm giving you some tough love here. That's a fucking stupid situation to be involved in. That's stupid. All right, unless you're using her to attract other females to get you fucking laid. Let's see if this is the case. I will continue reading. So she has this smoking hot friend. Oh, there we go. That I'd met a few times and always flirted with, but, uh, but it's just been overall friendly. So this chick calls me up one night, and I'm at the bar at, like, midnight and asks if I want to stay up drinking with her, and she'd come pick me up. So obviously I agree. Things go very good, and we have a few drinks and flirt. And when I make my move, she gets all upset, like I should have known. She just wants to be friends when she calls me up at midnight to say to stay up drinking with her alone. After the incident, the bitch still has the balls to, sl- to ask to sleep over. Uh, since then, I have noticed all her friends are trying to be my friend when all I want to do is rail the shit out of them. Bill, I was hoping you could, you should, you could shine some light on the situation and help me out. Yeah, dude. Never have a friend as a, as a female. You know, you, you always got to be fucking them. That's the only reason to be around them. You know, I know that sounds really sexist. But, you know, I I just, I'm speaking from me. There's no fucking point in hanging out with that level of frustration if you're not having sex with them. And if they're actually like a good friend, then that's the one that you should, uh, I mean, that's the ultimate. If you're banging them and they're also a great friend, that's the one you marry because you got a connection there, right? But if you just, I mean, they're using you as like a live teddy bear. And, um, yeah, the next time they call up, just be like, no, I'm, I, I'm not, I can't hang out tonight. Why? What are you doing? I'm going to go out and try to get some ass tonight. I know I'm not getting any from you. And it's frustrating because you're hot and I want to bend you over every piece of fucking furniture in my apartment. Oh, yeah, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, well, I just did. Are you going to come over here and fuck me? Well, then great. I have to go. Why are you being so mean? I'm not being mean. I'm being honest. Okay? Do you know how many times I've jerked off to you? It's fucking, it's annoying. That you just, you just, I'm telling you, like, that's a little aggressive, but that's what you have to start doing. You just have to be straightforward and honest. And don't do it like I just said it. Do it, if, do it how you can do it and pull it off. And you just say it like that. Just be like, yeah, I want to go out. I want to try to get laid tonight. All right? And I go out with you and you're not fucking me. And then other girls see me with you and they think that I am fucking you, which I'm not. And I end up going home uh, dry humping my futon. You know, and it's really fucking with my self-esteem. Okay, so that's it. So basically, what are you saying? You're saying that um, if I don't suck your cock, you don't want to hang out with me? Yes, that is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Your conversations are awful. You know, I'm sure they're interesting to other females, but not to me. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that shit. I can give a shit about the hills. The OC, the ocean, or whatever the fuck other stupid show you want. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I want to fuck you. Okay? It's world right there. You know what it is? You ever see what watch the World Series of Poker when you go all in? That's what you do. Just say what the fuck you want to do. You push all your chips in, then you stand up and you start walking around. You wait for that next card to drop. <laughs> you see what the fuck happens. Yeah, dude. That's my advice. Get out of that whole circle of yeah, he's like a big teddy bear. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right? You're not a teddy bear. Well, you are one right now. You got to stop being that guy. So fuck all of them. Go, uh, where are your guy friends? What are they doing? Go hang out with them. Go get a fucking wingman. Get yourself back in the game. And uh, go out there talk some shit. Hit on some girl you don't give a fuck about so you can practice not giving a fuck. And just say a bunch of shit that you would never say to some girl that you gave a shit about. Uh, because you don't give a fuck if the girl says no. Start with that. You know, always wear a condom, and uh, and that's it. That's what I would do. 
That's what I should have done. I didn't. I just have that knowledge now because I'm fucking... Uh, have I ever been the... You know something? I was never the friend, but I was definitely the douchebag. I was definitely the... the uh, not even pussy whipped. It wasn't even pussy whipped. It was just I couldn't fucking speak up for myself. I was afraid of having a confrontation. And then by the time I had the final confrontation, I was like, Aah! and it was like fucking a year worth of shit, and we broke up. Um, but that's a whole nother story. So- hey, what's up, everybody? It's Bill Burr. This is the Monday Morning Podcast that I'm recording for the third time this week, praying and hoping against hope that GCAS will actually upload this one because I've already spent 90 minutes doing podcasts this week. So anyways, if you're hearing this, it means I successfully uploaded it, so there's no sense complaining. Unlike the rest of the people in my fucking life, you know, you ever just have one of those weeks where everyone's just bitching at you? That's what I got, you know, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Like today's my girlfriend's birthday, and she's she was fucking pissed at me. She went absolutely psycho on me this morning, you know? It had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to fucking do with me, you know? I gave her a piece of cake last night right at midnight. Sang her happy birthday because technically it was a birthday. I gave her a pre-birthday slice of cake, and then I gave her a bag of Fritos with a little bow on it, right? Just being a silly jackass like that's all you're getting for your birthday, right? And everything was going great. I was a big sweetheart, and then I woke up this morning and made the mistake of telling her that I hadn't made a dinner reservation yet, and then she starts flipping out, acting like I'm just throwing her goddamn birthday together when I gave her a pre-birthday fucking slice of birthday cake, you know? Starts flipping out. I, I don't know why she was flipping out. It's like it's fucking Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. It's not a holiday. This, who the fuck is going out? Tonight, June 2nd, oh shit, was it Cinco de Mayo, you know, is it some fucking New Zealand holiday that I don't know about, there's going to be plenty of fucking reservations, and lo and behold, after she flips out, you know, screaming at me, right, so all my neighbors think that I'm beating her, women love doing that shit, they just put on this big fucking show, right, and then afterwards they just go, I'm sorry, I, I got a little crazy, I don't know what I was thinking, I just... You don't hate me, do you? you? You forgive me? They do that shit, right? Meanwhile, you know, your neighbors don't hear that part. They don't hear the part where they sort of say really quietly that they flipped out for no fucking reason, you know? All they heard was the screaming and yelling, so now I'm going to get the looks today. I'm going to go down to the garage, you know, like it's the 1920s. Like I should become walking out with like a fucking wife beater, you know, as I reattach the belt to my pants. <laughs> So this is what happens, right? I end up calling up this fucking restaurant, this this uh, one of the nicest steakhouses out here in uh, L.A. I call them up. I said, hey, I'd like a reservation for two people. They go, okay, sir, what time would you like? I said, how about 8? I uh, can't do anything at 8. How about 8.30? And I said, you know what, sweetheart? That would be perfect. And she said, okay. And that was it. That's all I had to fucking do. But for some reason, because I didn't do that before her birthday, that means that I don't give a fuck. That's how fucking nuts women are. She absol- she actually flipped out on me at 10 o'clock in the morning on her birthday. She didn't even give me a chance to fuck the day up. She did a preemptive strike. Even though I gave her a pre-birthday slice of cake, I sang happy birthday. I made her shut her eyes. I put... I- put out the lights, I lit a candle, I came in, I sang happy birthday, and I gave her a bag of Fritos, which is fucking ridiculous and silly. It was great. And tonight she's getting the real gift, if you know what I mean. Oh! Um. <laughs> you know? So it's one of those deals where I'm laying in bed, and then all of a sudden, she, uh it's just fucking ridiculous, you know? But I didn't back down. I didn't back down. I, you know, actually, when she really got mad, why she started flipping out is because she, when she was screaming at me, I was laughing. You know, I don't know if any other guy out there has that problem. You ever have, you, like, when your girlfriend starts yelling at you, your first instinct is just to start laughing? I don't know why. I, every time my girl yells at me, I instantly feel like I'm in school again, and I'm, like, in, in second grade, and I'm getting yelled at, and it's just, 
and my friends are laughing at me. That's that's what I feel like. I feel ridiculous. I guess that's what it is. When when a woman yells at me, I always feel ridiculous. You know, when a guy yells at me, I get mad because I think, oh fuck, this guy's gonna beat the shit out of me. So you you gotta get into that energy. But when a girl woman is just sitting there hey, 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 fucking screaming at you, what are you supposed to do? You know? I'm not going to yell back at you. You're a woman. I don't want to feel like a bully. We're not going to get physical. You're a woman. You know? It's stupid. Stop yelling. That fucking high-pitched voice. You sound like a fucking... You sound like Mickey Mouse. Sit down. Relax. Collect your thoughts. Make a list if you have to. Tell me why you're upset. You know? But don't just sit there fucking yelling at me like you just took a hit off a helium balloon. Because it just sounds hilarious, especially when I haven't done anything wrong and I got a great fucking gift this year. That's what was killing me. That actually, I actually had that moment during the fight where I said, You want your gift? Fine. And I went out and I pull it out. It's already wrapped with the bow on it. You know? Sitting there acting like I'm not fucking prepared. There's your fucking present. Bam. Wrapped with a fucking bow on it. Jesus. Everybody giving me shit. Remember last week when I called that woman a douchebag? Remember the douchebag of the week last week? Because she was giving me shit. Once again, a female, surprise, surprise, was giving me shit that when I read the underrated, overrated, or the questions people have, I wouldn't say what sex they were. And she somehow found out a way to kind of, I don't know, make me look like I was some chauvinist that I guess she felt, if it was a good question, I credited a guy. And, uh... You know, it's a free podcast, all right? Stop being so fucking cunty. So she became douchebag of the week. So evidently she didn't like it. And what does she do? She sends me an email. Here's the email she sends me. Uh, Bill, it's nice that you named me douchebag of the week. I don't really give a shit because I always mean what I write. I don't even know what that means because I always mean what I write. Oh, really? What, are the rest of us just faking it? We're just joking around? But not you. You're so fucking serious. So anyways, evidently this psycho... This is a new segment. This is... I can't can't figure out if this is uh, Love Letter of the Week or Psycho of the Week. I don't know. You guys name it. I don't give a shit. So anyway, she goes, I don't really give a shit because I always mean what I write. And it seems you're just talking shit about two things that I wrote that seemed bitchy. No, I was talking about your entire email. Don't try to knock it down. All right, continue here. She goes, call me a cunt, but I really don't give a fuck. You've read a lot of my comments previously and agreed with them or had a good response to them. I'm literally fixing her sentences because she doesn't know how to write here. But it's nice that you uh, will consider telling the gender of the person who, uh, who the comments are from. And I know you have a shitload of people who listen to your podcast, but I got you some more since my friends who heard the podcast thought it was fucking hilarious, and then they started listening to you. So you really should be thanking me. Isn't this just typical? This is just all going to be woman bashing this week. Isn't this just typical of a fucking female? You know what I mean? She's getting something every week, every week that is free, and she still found a way to bitch about it. Okay, and then when I call her out for being a douchebag, now she's actually trying to make me feel guilty. You know, I just, you know, you call me a douchebag, you know, whatever. I mean, just, even though I got a whole bunch of friends to listen to, I mean, probably should be thanking me, but, you know, that's okay. Shut up. Just sh- I swear to God. Why, why can't you slap women, you know? Back in the day, how great did that feel? You know, you have on the wife beater, the wind blowing through your armpit hair as you just fucking crack. I know it's evil. I don't give a fuck. Fuck all you guys. I don't give a shit. This is the rest of her email, okay, before you think I'm an asshole. This is what she wrote. This is actually so psychotic. It's hilarious. She writes, and yeah, I do know that the name shows up on the email even if I don't sign it, but you just make it seem like you that much of a retard to notice. That's literally what she wrote. And then she wrote... You're over 40 and have the vocabulary of a 7th grader. Your is spelt Y-O-U-R. All right, for all you morons out there, your Y-O-U-R is possessive, meaning like that's your shirt. Okay? If you're saying you're over 40, that's you are. 
Okay, so that means if you're going to say your, it's an apostrophe. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. So if you're a dumb fuck like this woman, if you don't know, the next time you go to write your, just stop and see if you are would still fit. All right, like you're over 40. You are over 40. Okay, right there, you know you got to use the apostrophe as, as opposed to saying you're over 40. So what is over? Do I own over? You dumb fuck. But I do have the vocabulary of a seventh grader. But you know something? You have the fucking vocabulary of a third grader. All right? You're over 40. And you have the vocabulary of a seventh grader. You can't recognize real words. How hilarious is this? And she's misspelling stuff. You stutter when you read. And I hope your dog outlives you. <laughs> and you die lonely because of your inability to commit and therefore never achieved the comedic fame of the great George Carlin. So, Simon says, go fuck yourself, since it sounds like you have major brain damage. All right. Sweetheart, I'm really going to try to help you out here. Okay, if you hope that my dog outlives me, and then you say, and then I die lonely. Okay, if I'm going to die before my dog, mathematically, the fucking dog is still going to be there, so how am I going to be lonely? You know, the dog would have to die first or run away. So what you should say is, I hope your dog outlives you, then runs away, and then you die by yourself, as opposed to saying, I hope your dog outlives you and you die lonely. No, I would die before my dog and be sitting there licking my face in my last few pathetic moments. And then evidently, because of my inability to commit to a relationship, I'll never achieve the comedic fame of George Carlin. Oh, that totally makes sense. It has nothing to do with the fact that I wasn't blessed with his gifts as a comedian. You know, all you have to do to be as good as George Carlin is just commit to a relationship to some psycho fucking chick like you. All right? Lady, these are podcasts. These are jokes. When I call somebody a douchebag, I'm just fucking around. So don't take it seriously. But if you want to, you and your friends can go fuck yourselves and go listen to another podcast. All right? Stop trying to threaten me. Like you're going to take podcast listeners listeners away. I don't give a shit. This is free. What are you going to take away advertising dollars from me? I don't give a fuck. Fuck you and your friends. I hope you're all listening it together. Fuck all of you. Look around the room. Look into each one of your eyes. I'm saying fuck all of you. You know what's funny? Is your friends are probably laughing at you right now. Going, you know what? She is, she is kind of a cunt. She really is like that. She does have a tendency. I know I shouldn't use that word, but I'm serious. She is. She can be real cunty sometimes. And she has a tendency to exaggerate things that aren't really happening. In fact, <laughs> all right. So that's the first hate mail. So I figured, you know what? Why don't I seek out? I'll try to find some other hate mail. Here's one that I got on YouTube. This is a nice one. Um, basically, I, uh, there's a clip on there from me from about eight years ago, which you'll obviously notice because I'm skinnier and have a full head of hair. And I'm doing this bit about joining the military, saying how, you know, when you watch the commercials for the military, it makes you want to join, you know? They make it look like everybody gets their own jet, everybody's driving a tank, everyone's doing some Top Gun shit, everyone's having a, a, you know, you're a fucking Navy SEAL, you get your face painted, and you're clinging to that raft, and you're coming up out of the water like fucking Rambo, disappearing into the mud and shit. That's what they make you look like, Right? But what they don't show is all the other jobs that, you you know, you go in there and you think you're going to be like, you know, Tom Cruise. Oh, my God, my dog just farted. Jesus Christ, Cleo. You know, could you at least like, you know what kills me about this dog when it farts? Is It, it doesn't even have the decency to fucking kind of make a face like, yeah, that was me. Sorry about that. She just lays here. Good Lord. At least it's silent. You know, it's the worst is when you have a dog that farts like a person. You ever been over somebody's house and the dog's in the corner and they just go like, <laughs> you just like, really? Anyways, so that was the bit. So the bit is, yeah, you, 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 you see the commercial and you sign up, you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to be like Tom Cruise and Top Gun. And then you show up and you end up being that guy, you know, when the jet takes off, you just like point in the same direction that the jet's going. Or they give you those, those orange glow sticks from a rave. You know, when the plane comes in, you're that guy. You put the air in the tires on the jet, you know, you join. And next thing you know, you're standing there with like a camouflage weed whacker. Yeah, that was the joke, okay? 
Simple joke. I actually did the joke at a military base, and I also did it at one of the VA hospitals, and it fucking killed. You know what I mean? So this guy, of course, has to go all Fox News on YouTube, and this is what he writes. This is actually kind of funny. He writes, you ungrateful bitch. And then he puts in quotes, if you're dumb enough to join the military, dot, 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 which is classic of somebody who wants to take a joke seriously, is they don't write the whole joke, is they just take not even a sentence, they just take a part of a sentence. Okay, so he writes, if you're dumb enough to join the military, dot, 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 and then he writes in capital letters, fact. Fact is, if it wasn't for the bravery of the American servicemen and the American spirit throughout history, I like the American spirit. What do you mean, chicks who go to a fucking bake sale? Um, anyways, you wouldn't even get... You wouldn't even have the right to mock those sacrifices which have been made for you. And if you did, you would probably be doing it in German. So respect your American serviceman because it is him in which you owe your freedoms to take to that. What? People can't, you know, half the time people think I'm a moron because people can't even write a sentence. Because it is him in which you owe your freedoms to that you take so foolishly for granted. That's word for word. Appreciate the sacrifices of other, you coward. Uh, you know, at what point did I make fun of servicemen? I didn't. I was making fun of the how fucking whatever. You know something? If you guys want to take jokes seriously, I don't give a fuck. And I, I'm really sick of that hacky thing where someone goes, you know, and they did it for you. And if you didn't, you'd be speaking German right now. That's how dumb people are. You know, they just use, like, to say that you'd be speaking German right now is a hacky fucking reference. You're just saying that because you heard someone else say it. You know? Why wouldn't I be speaking like I was from England? Why wouldn't I be speaking uh, Spanish right now? You know, we did fight other countries. Mexican-American War, how come that one never gets brought up? How come I wouldn't be speaking Korean? I mean, granted, they weren't over here, but you know what I'm saying? I'm so sick of fucking idiots who speak in sound bites, like everybody who like makes fun of France. Yeah, we fucking saved your ass in World War II, you fucking pussies. Read a history book. We were paying them back for saving our ass with England, you dumb fucks. So now we're even. All right, whatever. Look at me, I'm getting all upset here because people are morons. All right, let's, let's move on. to let's, let's get to some information here for the week. All right. Um, last week I was, uh, oh, here's a good one. Last week I was uh, teasing firefighters and I was talking about how... Uh, you know, 20 trucks show up to every fire. Why does that happen? How much do those trucks cost? And a uh, volunteer firefighter wrote in. He said, uh, uh, yes, how much uh, fire trucks cost? Fire engines which put the water out. Uh, oh, wait, put the water out. Fire engines which put water out. I think I'm dyslexic. Um, typically run between 300000 and $600,000. Fire trucks, also called ladder trucks, run between 400000 and 800000 The two main differences between the low and high numbers is the make of the truck and the equipment it comes with. A fire engine with all the hoses added on and the breathing apparatus is more expensive than without. All right, well, here's a question I have with, for you. You say the make of the truck. So uh, I guess what, Mack truck? That's a reputable, band, reputable uh, brand as opposed to what? A Hyundai fire truck? I guess that that's what it is. I don't even know what the fuck they are. But anyways, you asked, us, you asked why so many pieces of apparatus show up to a call. Uh, there are a few reasons for this. Sometimes it's manpower. In my case, we have three fire companies consisting of six pieces of apparatus. Since we volunteer, there may not be enough volunteers in town at any one time. So all three companies get banged out. Banged out equals called out in firefighting terms. Typically, at least four pieces show up for a call. This allows us to have all the equipment we need at the scene. Sometimes you just never know what you're going to need. All right, fair enough. Uh, but perhaps the best reason, this is great here, but perhaps the best reason is that sometimes we are called for what amounts to be, in the end, absolutely nothing. About six months ago, my pager went off. Your pager? Jesus Christ, dude. Is your fire truck pulled by a couple of horses? Who the fuck still has a picture? 
I know he's going to write back, actually, it's a special fucking 9-11 pager for firemen. All right, I'm a moron. I get it. All right. About six months ago, my pager went off for a, for a, a working house fire at 2 a.m. I jumped awake and flew down uh, to the firehouse. We got on the scene. We saw no smoke or flames. In, uh, in speaking with the residents, they had just woke up and saw a reflection in their mirror that they thought was a fire. So here's all six of our apparatus showing up for absolutely nothing. Or the time we called for for lightning hit, lightning hitting a house on a clear summer night. The woman heard something and thought it was lightning hitting her house. People are fucking idiots all over. Hope that helps. And even though I am a firefighter, your firefighter jokes were funny. See, there's a cool guy. You see there, sweetheart? Even though he's a firefighter, he sees the joke. He realizes I'm just telling jokes. All right. There you go, people. How we learned something this week. All right. You want to learn something else? Then I'm going to wrap up this fucking podcast. I know it's really short this week, but I I don't understand what the point of me keep babbling for fucking 50 minutes if GCAS won't upload the files. All right. Here's some computer tips for the week. Uh, Here's some computer tips on web searching. All right, Bill, when you want to find something that that you are Google it. What? That makes no sense. All right, when you Google, use the plus and the minus signs to find the shit you want. So this is how it works. If you want to search something with a plus in front of it, then it will have to contain the word. And if you want to put a minus in front of it, that will remove the word from the listing. So basically, put the plus in front of the word that you're searching, that you want to find, and a minus in front of the one that you don't want. For example, I want to see how many sites have Bill Burr on it while, limi- while eliminating Bill Burr from, uh, from the search. So you would Google the plus sign, plus my name, Bill, then the plus sign, and then you write Burr, minus billburr.com and the results will uh will show sites that can have content with Bill Burr on it and not include billburr.com huh isn't that interesting i didn't know that shit and he said i'm listed on 700,000 706,000 web pages not including my website 706,000 websites have my name on it and i still can't sell out the third show on saturday night what the fuck is going on all right, um, if you find some shit out, like, uh, if you want to find some shit out, like, to do, to you, I can't read what you guys write. If you want to find some shit out, like, to you do when you are on, what? I can't even paraphrase that. If you want to find some shit out, like, to you do No, like you do when you're on the podcast. All right, you had an extra word in there, dude. If you want to find some shit out like you do when uh, you're on the podcast, use the above option, the plus minus, or or use quotes. All right, you wanted to find the names of female serial killers a few weeks ago. Just put quotes around a phrase, and it will only show sites that contain all phrases. Okay, I get it. You know, like you guys ever go to search something and you'll like you'll just write female serial killers and then a bunch of uh hits will come up and you'll have a bunch that just say female and a bunch that will just say serial, another one will just say killers or whatever. Yeah, I guess if you put quotes around it, that puts it all together. You know what? That's very helpful. I know this part of the the podcast isn't that funny, but god damn it, we, we you know, we got to learn something here. All right, I should have got some water here. My fucking mouth is dry as hell. All right, let's wrap up the podcast here. Uh, This is the uh, serial killer topic. Bill, if you want to be a serial killer uh, and use the best weapon, you have to use ice. If you stab someone with an icicle or beat someone to death with ice, then it melts and you have no murder weapon or fingerprints, no DNA or fingerprint problems. Oh, yeah, that guy uh, that talked about tracking you down with the type of soil, where it was located, and the type of wood used and all that shit is exactly that bullshit they watch too many shows csi does not do that shit i know dude we all knew he was just fucking around he was making fun of how when you watch those shows um all right what else do we got here question uh bill you say that you play the drums um if you could uh play the drums in any band living or dead for one show one night only in any city in the world who would you play and 
in what city? Fuck. Um, Jesus Christ. It would either be Led Zeppelin. You know what's funny is I think I would have a better, better chance faking what John Bonham does than what Phil Rudd does in ACDC. What Phil Rudd does is so fucking difficult if you play drums to just sit there going, boom, crack, boom, crack for fucking two hours straight. Um, yeah, I think I would play. I would play with Led Zeppelin. I do it in England at Royal Albert Hall, and uh, I would and I would play on that that the Ludwig uh, that maple drum kit that he played. Either that or his Green Sparkle kit. I don't like the Vista Vista Light kit he had or the uh, the stainless steel one. I like the first two ones that he had. I'd play on either one of those, and somehow I would sound as good as. Can I? Can I? Can I have that as part of the fantasy that I would actually sound as good as he would sound? You know, that's what I would do. Um, and then I'd get fucking some 1969 groupie pussy afterwards. All right, next question. Bill, um, would you rather be respected, be a respected comedian who never makes it really big, like so-and-so and so-and-so? I'm not going to name the names. Uh, he named two people who are millionaires playing theaters, but I guess who can still walk down the street. He said, or would you rather be a one-trick pony like uh, blah, 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 who has written uh, one catchphrase to fame and fortune and has more cash than he can ever spend. Oh, no, I'd much rather be respected by my peers, without a fucking doubt. Without a doubt. I would, uh, you know, you can become a really big comedian and not necessarily be super, fu- like, that's the great thing about entertainment is you. it's easy to become, I can't say it's easy, but you can become a millionaire and still not be famous. You know what I'm saying? And I always use this this example, like that sitcom Caroline in the City. They actually made it to syndication, and the entire cast could walk by me on uh, walking down the street, and I wouldn't recognize any of them. So I would, you know, dude, you're a millionaire. How much fucking money do you need? And I also think the more I look at these people being super, super famous, it, is for, it, it just doesn't look like a good time to me. You know? I think I, I would, I want to be a millionaire who has notoriety, which means maybe two, three times a month, somebody goes, hey, you're that comedian. I really like what you do. And then, hey, thanks a lot. Then I go back to eating my omelet. I'd rather do that than fucking, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, don't, I don't ever want to fucking have to step out of a limo with no panties on. You know what I mean? Just so I can maintain fame at that fucking level. Wouldn't you think that would, wouldn't you think that that would be miserable? I mean, other than when you're at the, the, the fucking Celtics game and you have courtside seats, in that moment, that's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? I've always used this analogy, but at some day, at some point, you're going to have to fucking blow out a bathroom in public, and you don't want to be famous at that point. You know? You just want to be like, dude, you can't, some fucking guy just blew, you don't want, hey, Bill Burr just blew out the bathroom. <laughs> They literally put a fucking name to it. It's brutal. Um, all right. Overrated, underrated. Really quickly. Overrated. Beer with the lime already in it. No joke. It just tastes fucking gross. Um, what else do I got here? I'm sorry. This is really fucking unraveling here. I just, I, I, I've, done, I've done this too many times this fucking week. I don't, I, I've lost my passion. Like if Pau Gasol was doing a fucking podcast, this is what it would sound like right now. You know, and I'd be thumping my chest, acting like I'm giving you entertainment right now, and I'm not. You know, that's what I'm going to end with this week. What do we got here? I'm 28 minutes in. Good. I'll keep it under 30 minutes. I'm going to end with this prediction. I think Orlando's going to beat the Lakers, and I think that they're going to beat them in six games because uh, they don't have anybody to stop Dwight Howard. And I think Turkoglu is, uh, I don't know. I think that guy's going to get enough points, and then they got that other guy in the number two, or is he the point guard? I don't know shit about basketball. I just fucking hate the Lakers. So I'm going to go out on a limb here with no money down or nothing. I'm not going out on a limb. I just, I just think, I got a feeling. I got a fucking feeling. All right. I think Van, Van Gundy's going to out, he's going to out coach uh, Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, he's making home videos with his girlfriend, his new hot young girlfriend on, on his way to the Staples Center every night. They're soft. They're fucking soft. All they have is Kobe. Kobe's the shit. I love Kobe. But I think his teammates are scared of him. I think they're scared to fuck up around him. They're scared to disappoint him. Uh, and they just get freaked out and they just pass him the ball. That's what I think is going to happen. Pau Gasol gets the most quietest 
15 fucking rebounds and the quietest 20 points a game. I think he's going to he's going to take a fucking Dwight Howard elbow to his bearded chops sometime in game 2 and Orlando's going to win game 2. They got 3 in a row in Orlando. They're going to win 2 out of 3 and then they're going to come back and they're going to beat the Heartless Lakers in the Staples Center game 6. What the fuck do you guys think about that, huh? You like that one? You know? What do you guys think about the 2-3-2 playoff format? I think it's bullshit. I think the they give the advantage to the weaker team because the Lakers should have home court, right? And I don't think they do with a 2-3-2 format because when it's 2-3-2, the pressure is on the home team for the first two games, right? If it was 2-2, 1-1-1 like they do, used to do back in the back in the day, you open the first two games – the pressure is on Orlando to steal one. Now, when it's 2-3-2, two, two, the, the pressure's on the Lakers. They have to win both of those fucking games. They can't go 1-1 one, one and then have to play three fucking games in Orlando, right? Am I out of my mind? Now, this is, is this all getting boring? Well, I don't give a fuck because this is my third one this week. Listen, my goddamn mouth is dry. Um, so anyways, I might uh, do another podcast this week because I might have a very special announcement of something that I might be doing next week that might be on television. How do you like that? I'm leaving you with a little cliffhanger. Um, and with that, I don't have any gigs until, uh, the third week in July when I'm going to be at the Comedy Works in Denver. Um, why is that? Um, I booked a very small part in a very big movie. And um, I don't know. I'm shooting like five, six days on it, but they had to clear out my spe- my schedule because they're working around famous people's schedules. So I'm low man on the totem pole. So uh, I gladly cleared out my spe- my uh, schedule. So uh, I'll let you know what the name of the movie is and all that type of shit uh, when, in fact, I know that I haven't been cut out of it. How's that? All right? And that's the uh, very short, very succinct Monday morning podcast this week. The third fucking time. I'm praying to God that this thing is going to actually get published. All right? You guys have a good week, and thanks to everybody who came out to the improv uh, a couple weekends ago out here in Hollywood. All right? That's it. Take it easy. Take it easy.